When you're struggling with fractions, a lot of times we want to rely on some tricks, something easy to remember to help us just get the answer and not really worry about where it came from and how to do it, and then also how to do it when problems get more difficult. And that in lies the problem. If we don't have a foundational understanding of what we're doing, why we're doing, and actually how to do it, relying on tricks is great for the short term, but sometimes, and many times, it will come back to bite us. So that's why I wanted to come up with these three kind of tricks that I would prefer I want you to avoid. All right, the first one is keep change flip. Now, I actually never taught this one inside the classroom. I remember I was teaching pre-calculus one year and I was asking my students, you know, hey, how, how are we going to do this problem? And like, like half the class blurred out, keep change flip. And they all had the previous teacher for algebra two and this is the way that she taught them. And they all loved it and it was great. The problem was, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, once we started doing more advanced problems with fractions in pre-calculus, students got confused. They started making mistakes and some students just totally forgot, like keep change flip, what exactly are we gonna do? So let's go and review Keep Change Flip. You can see how beneficial it can be in the short term, but then I also want to explain to you why it is not always going to be the best for our understanding of dividing fractions. Okay, so in this case, I have two thirds divided by four fifths. Now the Keep Change Flip method basically says you're going to keep the first fraction, you are going to change from division to multiplication, and then you're gonna flip the second fraction. Now, most students prefer to do multiplication with fractions because all you simply need to do is multiply straight across. So in this case, we get a 10 over a 12, which can be reduced to a five over six. And it's not that bad. It's actually pretty easy to remember. We had a little bit of simplifying here, but the problem that I hate with this is it totally like forgets about our understanding of dividing fractions, what it is we are looking for. And when we get to more advanced problems, having this intuitive sense of like getting rid of the denominator, in my opinion, is very, very important. So remember that we can always go ahead and rewrite a division problem. Instead of using the division symbol, we can also use a fraction bar. So now we have a fraction divided by another fraction. Now the way that I always approach this, because I want students to be able to visually see this, we have a fraction divided by a fraction. Now there's a couple different ways to be able to get rid of a fraction or th ways to think about getting rid of a fraction. One is we could have a number in the denominator that evenly divides into our numerator. So four evenly divides an eight, two times, or even more simply, if we had like a number five divided by one, then we know that one obviously divides into five, five times, right? So anytime that we have our denominator equal to one, we can eliminate our fraction. So when you have a fraction divided by another fraction, that is really the goal. That's what we're trying to achieve is get this denominator equal to one. So then it comes into our thinking, well, how do we get four fifths to be able to one? Now we're gonna have to apply multiplication and what should I multiply by four fifths so therefore it can equal one? Well, remember any fraction multiplied by its reciprocal or any number multiplied by its reciprocal is simply just going to be a one. So you can see when I multiply by the reciprocal, I'm getting one. So the goal of the thinking here is I'm like, all right, well, if this is four fifths, if I multiply by five fourths, then obviously that's gonna go down to one, right? And then I'm no longer gonna have this fraction in the denominator. Now, the other thing is though, we have to remember, we have to create equivalent fractions. So whatever I multiply in the denominator, I also have to multiply in the numerator. And here is exactly where we're coming to there. Now, obviously I'm spending a lot of time explaining all of this and you can always go back and, you know, I would do this problem much, much quicker as well. I just multiply, flip the reciprocal. But the point that I'm trying to bring to you is if you try to remember what keep change flip is, and just try to remember that statement, sometimes you might forget it. When it comes onto a test, you have a lot of stress, anxiety, your time is against there, and you might forget exactly what to do or how to do it. But if you can fundamentally understand this idea of getting your denominator equal to one by multiplying by reciprocal, whatever you multiply in the denominator and the numerator, this is something you can never forget and something that you're gonna be using, not just in some basic algebra classes, but all the way up through calculus. And so now you can see you just multiply straight across, and again, you're gonna get the same answer, which we know reduces over to a five over six. All right, the next one has probably been covered many, many times. And you know, I, I teach, I a lot of times say with cross multiply, you know, it's the easiest thing to kind of remember when we get to that part portion. However, again, a lot of students make mistakes with cross multiplying because again, it has that cross, which everybody kind of agrees. And then the other thing is they see the multiplication. So how many times have I seen students where we have a product like a two thirds times a five fourths 
completely forget that this is the easiest problem in the world to just multiply straight across. But they remember that we've taught something and we say cross multiply, cross multiply. So what sticks in their brain? Cross multiply. So then they see a problem like this, that's exactly what they do. They go ahead and cross multiply. And ladies and gentlemen, that is not true. We know 2 thirds times 5 fourths is a 5 over 6. It's not going to be a 15 twelfths. Now there's another problem with mul cross multiplication, even when it comes into solving equations. And the problem with cross multiplication, even when it comes into equations, is students generally understand, okay, I'm going to cross multiply, I group those, and I group those. But again, like where the numbers go, where the equal signs, like does 2x times 5, does it go on the left side, does it go on the right side, 3 times 12, like, and honestly, it doesn't really matter which side they go on, but there's really no description of what to do next. It just says cross multiply. And so I've seen it so many times, students have made so many other different variations of mistakes of not getting the correct answer, which, you know, again, 2x times 5 would be a 10x, 3 times 4 is going to equal a 12, and then you could just go ahead and divide by 10 on both sides, and x is equal to a 12 over 10, which can be reduced to a 6 fifths. Now again, I like to go ahead and look at this a little bit differently. I like to look at this going into what do we need to do to get rid of our denominator? And rather than rewriting a 2x divided by 3, so it's a proportion, a fraction over a fraction, I want you to also think about it like this. There's a much easier way for us to be able to solve this. Rather than taking this as a 2x over 3, you could go and also go and take a look at this as a 2 thirds x, right? And our main goal, what we're trying to do, is really just get rid of this denominator. Actually, you know, I'll just even leave it. I'll actually, I'll leave it that way. Well, I'll show you this method, but this isn't going to be very computable to a lot of other more advanced proportions. But either way, I'll explain this since I started it. So, again, if I'm thinking about this, if I just want to isolate this x, Again, I want my coefficient of x to be 1. So what am I going to multiply by? I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is going to be a 3 halves. And therefore, then you can see this 2 evenly divides into 4 2 times. And therefore, x is going to equal a 6 fifths. It's a little bit easier. It's less making some, it's less guessing where the products are going to go and making a mistake that way, as well as having to reduce, where it's a lot easier to reduce before you go ahead and get into your multiplication. Now, the point that I was getting to, and this is the one that when I'm teaching proportions that I like to address with students, and it takes a little bit more work, um, but it kind of goes to that fundamental understanding that I was talking about in the first examples with keep change flip. My goal here is to get rid of my denominator. Right? I want to solve for x. So yeah, I can apply the cross product, and then again, like I can make mistakes, but it's really about the same amount of operations here. If I say, all right, to get rid of this denominator, I need to find a number that 3 will divide into. Well, the quickest, easiest, fastest number that 3 divides into is 3. So you multiply by 3 on both sides, then you get a 2x equals a 12 fifths. And then you say, all right, well, to get rid of 2 to be a 1, you could divide by 2, or you could also think of, well, why don't I multiply by, again by its reciprocal? 2 times 1 half is just going to equal x, and then you multiply by 1 half over here, and x equals a 12 over 10, which again simplifies to a 6 fifths. So cross multiplication, if you understand the process, can be something rather quick to go back and work through. But again, I've seen so many students just rely on this, forget it, apply it for multiplication, as well as just make mistakes around here. But if you have this fundamental understanding of what we're trying to achieve when we're solving for our variable x, that means get that x by itself, you can just apply inverse operations. You can also think about just getting rid of those denominators by multiplying by what's in your denominator. All right, now the last one is one also that I think so many students benefit from. It's such a great one. I even saw it on TikTok and I was like, man, this is, it can be very, very helpful but also skips over addresses some of the most important understandings for adding fractions. Now, the butterfly method is pretty cool. It's pretty easy to remember. If you have a fraction, add another fraction. You don't have common denominators, which most students are like, ah, I hate doing this. What's, some, what's a great trick? I'm gonna, can't wait to listen to this, is all you can simply do is take these two, and rather than adding them, kind of like cross multiplication, you're gonna simply add them, or multiply them, so that'd be a 10, and then you're gonna take the cross over here and multiply them, which would be a three times four, which is a 12, and then you multiply straight across, which is gonna give you your common denominator, 15. 10 plus 12 is going to be a 22 over 15. Voila, look how quick, easy I did, and it looks like a butterfly, it's beautiful. But holy moly, ladies and gentlemen, if you this is what you rely on, and you don't understand how to add or subtract or get common denominators, that's a problem. And I feel like a lot of students are going to struggle later on in mathematics if they don't understand the general idea of 
identifying and creating common denominators, especially once you get into more complicated problems. And furthermore, what I also don't like about this problem is the students will still apply the butterfly method when you have a problem like this. Because if you're gonna rely on a problem if you're gonna rely on a technique like this, well, then what are you gonna do when the numbers get a little bit larger? Now, this isn't crazy crazy, right? But if you already struggle with math, you don't even know how to do fractions, then probably doing a problem like this would probably even confuse you just a little bit more too, right? So, you know, multiplying these numbers, seven times 16, eight times five, adding them, eight times 16, like, that can be a lot especially when you're taking a test. And so I think it's really, really important to understand like what we're trying to achieve. And yes, the way that this works, that if I have a two thirds plus a four fifths, the only way we can add fractions if they have common denominators. And a lot of times multiplying your denominators is going to produce that common denominator. So you just gotta be able to think, well, what do I need to multiply? What is the smallest number that three and five evenly divide into? This comes in understanding some number sense. I don't want to avoid our number sense by relying on a method. I want students to be, and I don't have a problem with this, especially if you have a good number sense, you have a good foundation, and this has maybe been something helpful for you, but I find out a lot of students make mistakes going through method, and then they still, they couldn't find the common denominator of three and 15 easily. It's going to be 15. 15 is the smallest number that three and five divide into. So to identify the common denominator, I'm gonna multiply by five over five and a three over three. You can see how these products are created and how the denominator is created. So it's a 10 over a 15 plus a 12 over a 15, which equals, yes, a 22 over 15. Now, if you understand the smallest number that two numbers divide into, that LCD, then you look at this problem and you say, well, what's the smallest number that eight and 16 divide into? I know eight goes into 16 and 16 goes into 16. So rather than doing this crazy butterfly method, I can just multiply by two over two. That's not that difficult. Look how easy it is just to multiply by two over two rather than having to go through this whole process. Now, I have a 14 over a 16 plus a five over a 16, which equals a 19 over a 16. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm not against tricks for multiplying them. I think the problem is I see so many students make mistakes and rely on them when they don't have a strong foundational understanding of fractions and number sense.